This is Rachel Kite, Chief Executive Officer of Sustainable Energy for All and Special Representative of the UN Secretary General for Sustainable Energy for All. Previously, she was World Bank Group Vice President and Special Envoy for Climate Change. In that role, she oversaw work on climate change adaptation, mitigation and climate finance across the institutions of the World Bank Group. I'm going to ask you to take the floor twice. Please take the floor, Rachel. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Nick, it's lovely to see you and it's lovely to be here. Hello, everyone. And um, really inspired to follow Gonzalo, who uh, is uh, showing that it's not just a race as a sprint, but also a marathon. So carbon markets are going to be an important part or already an important part of how countries are going to uh, finance their their need for adaptation and resilience in their own green transitions. They're also an important way for certain parts of our uh, economy, different industries, to be able to make the transition from their current practice to being net zero companies or being companies that are truly carbon neutral. I mean, a carbon market is basically based on the idea that if you have carbon assets, you can monetize them, you can turn them into a financial flow that you can use for your own uh, climate purposes. And so carbon markets have always held out a big promise for developing countries, for countries with great natural resources, for uh, local communities, for indigenous peoples and others. But uh, despite all of the promise, I think it's fair to say that they've played an important role, but they haven't been fully realized. Now, now because we have this race to zero that has been unleashed by Gonzalo and many others, Many, many companies are now coming forward, forced by their investors, forced by the geopolitics of China, the US, uh, the EU, 70% of global GDP committing to being carbon neutral by 2050. Companies now have to find a way to become carbon neutral themselves. And for many of those companies, they're looking at the carbon markets as a way to be able to do that. In some cases, to offset the emissions that come from their operations by entering into the carbon markets. So the carbon markets are, of course, controversial because within the carbon markets, especially the voluntary carbon markets, there have in the past been greenwashing. So companies making a claim that they are carbon neutral without being able to explain how they do that, without being able to explain the science of it. And now today, without perhaps first explaining how they're going to reduce emissions, and then once they've reduced emissions and that they have a science-based pathway for their own transition, where they would only use carbon markets to get rid of the residual emissions that they couldn't get rid of by changing their processes or changing their business models. So the Voluntary Carbon Markets Integrity Initiative is here basically to try to bring stakeholders, government, civil society, business, finance, everybody together to establish the rules around the claims, the guide guardrails or the guidance necessary for us to make sure that within a voluntary carbon market, claims can actually be trusted and that finance would actually flow into the uh, pockets of those who would need it in order to protect nature. The voluntary carbon market only needs to exist if it actually helps us smooth the pathway to one and a half degrees and if it helps produce a revenue stream to those who need it the most. We don't need a voluntary carbon market if it is just going to circulate money around in a, in a, in a tub of greenwashing. I think it's also important to realize that the carbon markets could grow very, very fast, but a carbon market with high integrity, where there are clear rules and transparency and assurance that a claim is truly a claim, that will lead to a growing carbon market. But trying to grow the carbon market fast without that integrity will not breed the kind of trust that we need for developing countries to know that those resources will actually help them and for companies to know that their claims will actually help them improve their position with investors. So the only business case for carbon markets is for a high integrity carbon market. So over the next few months, with an extraordinary expert advisory group, we will be coming forward with 
um, a set of, of guidances for discussion and for uh, argument, really, about how we will make sure that there is integrity in the voluntary carbon market. How will we know that carbon exchanges are actually allowing us to move towards 1.5 degrees? How will we know that we are aligning with Paris and with the SDGs? How will we know that a voluntary carbon market will actually lay the groundwork for regulated carbon markets and for other forms of regulation, which are absolutely necessary if we are going to take carbon out of our economies? How will we know that uh, a claim on, on the private sector side is one that is based on science? How do we know that it's a legitimate claim in a transition? Because there are companies today that will find it very difficult to be carbon neutral without some, uh, some facilitation. And so these are the kinds of questions that we're asking ourselves, and these are the kinds of guidelines that we'll be issuing probably after COP26. Of course, there's extraordinary work that's already going on, largely in the private sector around the voluntary carbon market, really building enthusiasm for cooperation and collaboration that's absolutely necessary. What we do is hopefully provide that work, the task force and others that have been established with the, uh, the intel inside, the way to do this so that it is with high integrity. If we have high integrity, then there's a real reason to believe that we could actually uh, see a carbon market provide very, very necessary resources into developing countries that don't have the finance today to make the transitions that they need to make. But as I said, this only makes sense if carbon markets help us reduce um, emissions and help us do so in an equitable way. Uh, thank you so much indeed for that. Many people will not understand this topic, but you basically outlined the challenge here and what you're trying to achieve. Thank you very much for joining us.